Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 53 of the Arianets podcast. My name is Ariel, and this is a video podcast where I talk about all the things that I have been knitting and spinning on for the past week or so. And today it is Saturday, December 9th, and I had a really fun day today. I will talk about it at the end part of the video. Uh, but yeah, I am filming later in the day than I usually do, so the lighting, it is now getting dark outside, as you could probably tell. So the lighting's not great for me here today, so I do apologize for that, but hopefully everything will still kind of look okay and that you will be able to at least see some progress on the things that I've been working on. And yeah, I do have a, you might be able to tell, especially when I put my hands like this, there is, so I have one light that's like over here. And then I have a purplish light, which is like used for my plants that are like right in front of me. And so there, if there's, if you see it like a purple kind of tinge of color, then that it's coming from the light here. So that, that is what our lighting situation is like for today. But I hope you're all having a great day so far. And let's just jump right into it. So what I am wearing today, I am wearing the Air Tea by Ozetta. And this was a finished object from last week, but I wore something different on the podcast, so I'm wearing it on this podcast just to show you what it looks like on me wearing it. And the yarn I use for this is Big Little Yarn Co. Organic Wool Linen Fingering in the colorway Nudie Kabe. I knit size extra small. I use US 3 needles, which I believe is a recommended needle size for this pattern. And my finished measurements, I got 34 inches in circumference, and that gives me about 4 inches of positive ease, which I believe is in the range of what the recommended ease is, or at least close. And I pretty much, I was close to the final measurements for my size. I think final measurements might have been 35 inches, so mine's is one inch smaller in circumference. Uh, but the end result, four inches, positive, four inches of positive ease for me is something that I like. And I overall really like the fit of this tee. This is the first time that I uh, knit something with this uh, yarn base and it's very interesting. I want to know how this feels when the weather is like really hot or when it's warm because I wonder if that would just like change how I feel about this base. I will say, oh first let me stand up as I usually do just to show you the ease. Let me back up here as much as I can. Apologies for the crease in here because it was folded in half before I put this on, but here's what it looks like on me. Short sleeve, eye cord edgings, and then the back detail here, where it's, this back panel is knit sideways. All right, hope you're able to see that. And yeah, should I try to get a closer look. The lighting is just not great for me right now for colors, so again, I do apologize for that, but at least you can see the fit on me. Oh, I also want to say, so I wanted to show that, and then it is cold here. This was supposed to be a summer knit for me, and I finished it last week, so I am going to be wearing, I need to put on a cardigan because I am cold, and this cardigan is something I have shown before. This is my Straya cardigan, and I love it a lot. And so, yeah, that is what we'll be wearing over this today. I don't think it really matches, but also, like, it doesn't matter. I'm staying at home. So anyway, so that's the Air Tea by Ozetta. Oh, yes, I was saying I really like the fit. I really, I really enjoy the end product of this tea. Again, I want to see how this yarn base feels in the summer or warmer months because it is a wool and linen yarn base and I think linen is supposed to be just yeah like a summer summer uh, base it's supposed to be light and really kind of like flowy to wear I think it does have like that flow of like or a drape I would say of the fabric but 
One thing I would say about this base, and again, this is the first time I've used it, so I don't know if this is just like how it is, but there are a lot of the, I believe that it is probably like the linen. There is no way you're going to be able to see it on camera, I guess, but a lot of it kind of just like sticks out of the, like the fabric. Like when you look at it from the side, it just looks kind of like, Almost like there's a lot of twigs sticking out of it. And I think it's the linen. It surprisingly doesn't feel like there's twigs sticking out of it, I guess. Like it, it actually honestly feels really nice on like on skin. Like it doesn't feel itchy or scratchy. But it is slightly annoying in terms of like every time I look down, I kind of just want to like pick them out. Uh, so that is just kind of like something to take note of. I do have this yarn base on a different colorway as well. And so we'll see what I decide to knit that up into as well. But yeah, I, it's just very interesting. It was a new, new yarn base, as I've said, I think a hundred times now, <laughs> sorry. But yeah, I mean, but it wears nice. And so I think I like it. The project for me, it's really, it's really tough for me because, not really tough, sorry, but I really like the end product of this tee, but I didn't particularly enjoy the entire process of knitting it. I think part of it is because it is knit on a fingering weight yarn, and so it does just take longer, and then I did do, I did alternate skeins, and so I did helicone knitting, and that just kind of like made me not want to knit on it sometimes. The sleeves are pretty long, sorry, oh just in case, I'll just take off one sleeve. The sleeves are, it's a short sleeve top, but it's not like, it is still a significant amount of knitting, especially for a fingering weight base, I think. Like it almost goes to my, help. I guess not really, but it is, the sleeves felt oddly long to knit, even though it's short sleeve. And then the body, because it's not cropped, at least, I mean, you can make it cropped if you want to, but I do sometimes like a non-cropped tee, and so I did want to try and knit it as long as I could handle it, and so that also kind of took a while to knit the body. I think I did end up shortening it by one inch, maybe half an inch, and so it, I did have to shorten it because I was like, oh my gosh, I am so done. But again, it's hard because... I didn't enjoy knitting it. Like it was fine. The pattern was fine. Nothing against the pattern. It was just me knitting it. I didn't super enjoy it, but I really like the end product. So I would like to have another tee, another air tee, and maybe a solid color instead of a variegated, since I did use a variegated yarn for this. It would be kind of nice to have a solid color of this. And so maybe we'll see if that ends up happening in the future. But yeah. So those are my thoughts on the Air T. And next, I have two finished objects to share with you. And it's really funny because they're ones that are also new cast-ons for this week. And yeah, now they're finished objects. So I will just jump right into talking about them. So this first one, I finished this in less than 24 hours when I cast it on. I casted this on last Sunday, I think. Yeah, yeah, this past Sunday. Oh, and last week's video, I ended up filming on Sunday instead of Saturdays. And so I uploaded it on Monday, I think. And yeah, so from the time after I filmed last Sunday, I cast this on and then I finished it Monday morning. And I love it so much. <laughs> it was a very, uh, I did not plan to finish it as fast as I did, but it just kind of happened that way because I was obsessed with it and I just wanted to finish it because I was so close. Okay, enough just talking about it. Let me tell you what I am talking about and let me show it to you. This is the Indulgent Brioche Cowl. It's a pattern by my friend Bridget. And it's finished. It is done. 
and it is so cute. So, okay, first things first, yarn. I use, so there's two different yarn colors that I use for this. And okay, I will, actually I will plan on, I am planning on posting a, actually there is already an Instagram post of this finished object, but I'm planning on posting one with me wearing it as well later on. And so hopefully the colors in that picture would be better. It actually, is it better if I hold it back here? Okay. So yarn I used for this, I used two different yarn. And so the first one, which is yarn A in the pattern is I use a hand dyed yarn. And so that is like the yarn that is used for the ribbed sections here, like by itself. And it is, I would say it's like a brown pink. And I do have it caked up here. And so you can kind of, kind of maybe see it. And it is, I believe like a merino alpaca blend, some kind of, it does have alpaca in it and it's really, really, really soft. So I thought it would be perfect to use for this. And then I also wanted to use a hand spun yarn for this, for this middle section here. And so I decided to use one of my hand dyed, I mean, hand spun skeins. And this was a Targi fiber from 316 Dye Studio. And the colorway was Garden Meadow, which is a green, pinky purpley and a cream color so i do have i did not use all of it and so i do still have like this much of it left and i thought i'd show you kind of what that this looks like in the in the skein uh hopefully you can kind of maybe see something of the color here i'm trying to block this purple light temporarily with my hand in the back but yeah so this was my first time knitting with Targi and I really liked it. Very happy with it. I believe that I spun this to about a DK weight. And so I was like, I think that that would work really well with this pattern. And then my hand dyed yarn. This is actually a fingering weight base, but I held it double so I could get a DK weight. And it turned out to this and I am just overall really happy with how this came out. It was a really quick knit. So as I said, I started this on Sunday night and I got about halfway. And so this is worked in the round. It's worked in the round and you start on one end and you go to the other. And they're pretty much symmetrical. There is a lot of brioche knitting and I, love all the techniques that were talked about the instructions were very easy and clear to read and i'm just trying to get this lighting a little better okay if i put my hand here i think that that works a little better so hopefully you can see what that stitch pattern kind of looks like and i love it there are parts where it looks like there it's like between the two colors it kind of switches off between every stitch. And then this middle section here is like a two color brioche, but it switches back and forth from the first color and the second color. And I just really like how this color combo turned out as well. And I'm just really happy with it. And again, it was such a fast knit. Again, less than 24 hours. Like, how did I do that? I think it's just a really quick knit. And I had so much fun with it because it was like all, it was like my hand dyed yarn and also hand spun yarn. So that was really exciting. I like to see how the colors were worked up. I really like this color combination as well. Just basically everything about this, I really like. I ended up using a US 5 needle for this. And the pattern calls for US 4, I believe, but 
I did not have any spare US4 needles and I really wanted to cast this on because a pattern actually came out on the Sunday that I cast this on and I was like, I want to cast this on immediately. And I could not, could not deal with trying to figure out how to get one of my US4 needles off of another project. So I just went with US5 needles because I would be okay with this being slightly bigger around my neck for a more relaxed, comfy fit. And it is a one size version, but again, if you make certain modifications, you can make it different sizes. There's also a short guide in there for like, if you wanna make it smaller or bigger than the pattern they have recommended like cast on uh, stitch numbers for it as well. But I did go with just what was the main written pattern. So my size for this ended up being a couple inches larger, but again, it worked out fine. I guess I can put it on right now to show you what it looks like on me. Here we go. I actually wore this today when I went out because it was really cold and rainy. And I mean, the rain doesn't, rain's never really great for wearing knitwear, but like I had a hood on and this was, I had a rain jacket and I just needed like my neck area to be warm. And so I wore this all day today and I was very comfortable and I was very happy with it. It was part of the plan when I cast this on earlier in the week, I knew I was going out today and I was like, I want to finish this so I can wear it today. And I did, and it was worked out perfectly. So this is what it looks like. I, can you believe that this is my first knitted cowl? I've never made a cowl before. I think because I was just like, for honestly a lot of winter accessory knits, I'm, I kind of view them like, why? <laughs> like, do I need that? Like, what's the purpose? Like, and does it actually help and keep you warmer? And I think part, part of the reason why I think this is because if you don't know, I grew up in Hawaii and, you know, there's no, it's not really a winter. Like, it does not ever get really cold. It's kind of basically one temperature all year round and dressing for really rainy weather and cold just doesn't make sense to me. Like I still don't know what I'm doing. Uh, so I, f I feel like that's probably why, but I've never, I've never felt the urge to knit a cowl, but I finally did because I love this one and I wore it all today and I was like, I need to knit more cowls, I think. I really like it. And they're very easy to put on. They're very like no fuss and they're so cute. They knit up so fast. So that was my big takeaway from uh, knitting this as well. And so that is, sorry, why am I talking while I'm like trying to take this off? So that was my first finished object for this week was the indulgent brioche cowl. And I, it's just, I'm going to get so much wear out of this because I love it so much. It's so comfortable. I love the yarn choices for this. I just love this whole project. So I will probably make more of these in the future because it's such a great way to also use hand spun yarn and to just show off those colors. And yeah, so, that is my first finished object of the week. And I'm trying to make sure I didn't forget anything else about this. But yeah, first finished object. I love it so much. Okay, next up, I do have another, I have a second finished object for this week. It is another winter accessory type of knit. I, I knit these up in one day as well. Just because I couldn't stop. Uh, these are, I, I knit some Manhattan mitts. Manhattan mitts. It's a pattern by Tori Yu. And I've been wanting to make these for a while. I just never could get myself to knit these. But after I made my cowl, I was like, oh my gosh, maybe it's time to knit more winter accessories. And I've only knit one pair of fingerless 
knits before and I really like them, but I knit them too big. So I I would still wear them, uh, but they, they, they were just too loose. And so I always felt like I had to like hold onto them while I was wearing them because I felt like they were gonna fall off my hands. And so I've always wanted to make another pair that were a lot more fitted. And if you don't know, I love Tori Hughes Manhattan hat patterns. Love it. And so when there were the Manhattan knits, actually, when did they come out? When did this pattern come out? I don't remember. But when they came out, I was like, I mean, they're really cute. They're basically just one by one rib, but there is a nice detail on the inner part of each hand, which if my camera would focus and I'll block the purple light. Ah, oh, there we go. The increases like by the, are like coming out from the thumb. It might be kind of hard to tell in this yarn because it's kind of like tweedy, but yeah, I really like that detail on the inside part of the hands. And I guess I can just put them on too so that you can see them on. Uh, I knit the adult small size and I used US4 needles, which is the recommended needle size. Oh, and I just talked about how I didn't have US4 needles to make the cowl, but then I ended up using US4 to make these. I don't know what I did or what project I took these off of, but I guess I could have made the other one in US4, but mm. So I rolled up my sleeves so that you could see better how this fits around my wrist. I really like that. I mean, I think I just finally knit a size that actually fit me so that everywhere just is fitted and nothing is like really loose. And so here it is. I followed the instructions for like the lengths to knit things to. I think the only thing is I might have knit the thumb section a little bit shorter. Like those are just very, like the thumb section and then the rest of your hand section, you can just knit until whatever length you want. So yeah, but these are the Manhattan mitts. And I, these are another accessory that in the beginning, like before I've ever wore or knit them, I was like, what? are the point, what is the point of fingerless knits? Because my fingers are the things. My fingers get cold. I don't ever think about my palms getting cold. My fingers get cold, so why would I? I want to knit something that covers them. But I feel like they're actually quite nice. A lot of the time, like, I don't want to, what am I trying to say? I think I've noticed that like sometimes when I drive, if my hands are cold, like my hands get cold when I drive, like holding the steering wheel. But like when I wear full gloves, it feels weird. Like it feels weird to not be able to like feel the steering wheel with like my actual fingers. And so wearing these will keep like the part that's holding the wheel, like it's warm but I can still feel with my fingers. Another thing is like, if I'm out, I can still like, if I need to like, you know, look on my phone for something, I don't have to like take off my whole like glove just to like use my phone. Or like, I'm worried if I'm holding like a card with full gloves, like I can't feel it and so I might drop it. But with these, you know, my hands are still kind of warm, but I can still actually like feel things, I don't know. There's, I, I like them. I like fingerless gloves. I'm going to make more of them. I say as, I don't, when was, I don't remember when. So these are my second ever pair of fingerless gloves. I really like my first one. And I said, I would, I love them. I want to make another one, but it probably took me like a year to make a second pair. But I also wore these out today and they were wonderful, wonderful. So lots of motivation or I know, that if I knit these, I will use them. And that makes me very happy. And, oh yes, the yarn I used for these. So I have, if you remember my first sweater spin, 
uh, for, yeah, my first time spinning a sweater quantity of yarn. I knit the dad's sweater pattern with it. And so I finished that sweater. It's getting a lot of wear out of it from me. And when I was knitting it, I was worried I was going to run out of yarn. But what happened was I ended up with some extra yarn. And I was trying to figure out what to make with the extra yarn. And so I decided to use some, there's, I still have extra uh, hand spun yarn of this, but I decided to use some of it to make these mitts because they're so cute. I think they're so cute in this yarn because it's like this tweedy, like rainbow neon colored tweed yarn. And, but the whole base is gray and so it doesn't look super crazy. I just think it's really cute and I thought I'd wear it or I thought I'd knit it with this yarn. It's also very comfortable to have on my hands, like it's not itchy at all. And yeah, so again, as a reminder, the hand spun I used for this was uh, fiber from La Bien Amy. It was the confetti fiber, which is now sold out, or it was sold out, I think maybe the first day. I think I checked the day after I bought this fiber, which was like a while ago, and it was sold out. And so I'm hoping that she will eventually bring this fiber back maybe in a different base color, I don't know, but yeah, this was really fun to spin and I'm happy that I still have some more of it and so just trying to find other ways to use it. But for these fingerless mitts, I'm very happy with it. So yeah, so that's the Manhattan mitts. These were my second finished object for this week because I am crazy, but I'm very happy with them and yeah, just all over, all around, just, Good stuff. I'm very happy. And I use them already. So yeah. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about my works in progress this week. I spent a lot of this week on just a few and I'm looking, I'm counting. It was four projects, but I guess it's six total if you count my two small finished objects. But out of the projects that I did not finish, there were four. So, yeah, I guess it sounds like a lot to have worked on, but for me, it felt like a very focused amount of work on certain projects. So anyway, let's get started. Oh, you'll notice I am not starting off with my Mackenzie shawl. I did not work on it at all this week. I think partly because I know that it's not something I can finish by the end of this year. And so I'm okay with it, you know, going into the new year. But I did work on a different shawl. This is my Cinnabar. I would like to finish this before the end of the year. We will see how long it takes for me to finish this up. I am pretty close. It feels close, but I know that the rows just keep getting longer and so I might be, my guess might be slightly off because of it. But let me try and hold up what I have. I will show you my stitch marker for progress from last week. And so we've made at for how many stitches there are now, this is, I think, pretty significant progress for the amount of rows worked for this week. And I don't know which side is, actually maybe this side would be easier to see like the pattern. So each, you know, section of like this stripe and then the bigger colored section, I am slightly over halfway done with this like bigger colored section. And so I am really just like, I feel like I'm just like, come on, let's get, let's get to the next small stripe section. And so that's kind of where we're at right now. Here's the beginning edge. So, oh my gosh. Actually, if I held it this way, is that better? Is that easier to see? Not really. I could maybe show each section. Did I say what pattern this was? This is a cinnabar by Andrea Mowry and okay yeah maybe I can show it like this so that there's a two color brioche section 
on one side and then a garter stitch section on the other. And main color for this, I am using a Durum Natura Ulyss yarn color in this kind of like white, slightly gray yarn. And the contrast color for this is my hand spun which is a Corydale fiber from Bella Filato Studios and the colorway is Sand Dunes, which is a pink, pinky brown gray colored yarn. And I am knitting this along with friends. Actually, Emily already finished her Cinnabar. I think I, think I mentioned that in last week's video, but it looks fantastic. And I love her, so she hand spun all the yarn for her cinnabar and I love the colors that are in her shawl and it really makes me want to make another cinnabar shawl with a hand spun fiber that or hand spun yarn that the color changes are a lot more drastic or different because so I really like mines don't get me wrong I really like it but the color changes on mine are very subtle just because the different color, the different colors in my fiber were just really close to each other. It was like a pinky purple, a pinky peach, and some like gray. And so they all kind of like up close and maybe if I had better lighting, you could see it. You can see those colors striping, but it would, I think, look super nice as, as Emily's does with the very different color stripes. So I do see myself possibly making another Cinnabar in my future. Although there's also other shawls by Andrew Mary that I think would be really, well, all of them pretty much. Or she has a lot of shawl patterns that are very like, I think she's probably used her hand spun for that would look really nice, but I could see myself knitting another cinnabar with a different kind of colored fiber. So again, I love mines and I'm really happy with it, but oh, I do love the ones that the colors are very like strikingly different in the stripes. Stripes? Yeah. Yes? I don't know what I just said. But yes, yeah, so that's a small progress on my cinnabar. And as I said, I would really like to finish this before the end of the year. I am not that concerned yet about running out of yarn. Uh, Emily talked about this on her podcast where she actually ran out of yarn for her main color for her shawl and she was right at doing, she was knitting the border, like the very end of the shawl. She was knitting the border and she didn't have enough of her main color to finish knitting like all the rows or the amount of rows that the pattern says to knit. But she ended up just binding it off a little short and then she also like ran out right towards the end binding off and she just had to use another yarn. I think I will be okay on my main color. I don't want to jinx it. I have this much more left or well, this is a ball that's connected to my shawl right now. I have this much left. It's pretty, I didn't use much of it, I think, so far. And then I have a whole nother one left. So I have maybe like one and a half or like one and three fourths of this yarn left for my main color. And then this though is my second skein of my contrast color of my hand spun. And this, this will be it with it. And I think I'll be okay. But yeah, I'm like, ooh, please, please last me until the end. So I think we'll be okay, but yeah. Okay, so that is my Cinnabar. Oh, this is a one size pattern and I'm using US6 needles, which is the recommended needle size for this pattern. Okay, so that is the progress on my Cinnabar. And then, oh, I wanna talk about my pressed flowers cardigan. I have made good progress on this in the past couple days. So this is another project that I think would be nice to finish before the end of the year, but but I'm also okay if it goes into the new year. Uh, but here is 
my progress. I was working on the back, so I've already split four sleeves. This is a bottom up cardigan pattern, so I was working on the back flat. Actually, the whole it's a cardigan, so it's all worked flat, except for the sleeves. I think the sleeves are worked in the round. I hope they are. But anyway, so this is the, <laughs> this is the back. Here's my stitch marker for where I started uh, at the beginning of this week. So I knit three full rows of the flowers, basically three rows of flowers from this week. And then I did the shoulder shaping on the edges here and bound off for the top. So now the sections I have done are now the right front, the cardigan, the back, and then now I just need to start the left front or the left, you know, top front of the cardigan. So we are getting close. I believe that pretty much after I finish the front left, which should be pretty quick, like if you look at the size of this one, like from the underarm, because you also, it's like a v-neck, and so you do decreases as well as you work the front. It should go by pretty quickly, and then I will, all I think I have net left to do are the two sleeves and then the neckband. So it's getting pretty exciting. I have been just loving working with my hand spun yarn. As you can probably tell, I've knit a lot of things. Everything has everything I talked about so far, I've knit one of the yarn is with hand spun. So I've just really been enjoying knitting with my hand spun. But yeah, so main color for this is Durham Natura Ulyss in the colorway 4A, which is the dark green. And the hand the hand spun is a super fine merino fiber from Nest Fiber in the colorway Paper Kites, which is just the cutest color. I'm gonna try and like cover that purple light again and try and show you this. But yeah, uh, it's looking so cute. So I'm very happy again with how this is coming out and I'm excited for the finished object of this. I really like wearing cardigans and I think I should probably knit more cardigans. So I'm knitting this cardigan and I can't wait to wear it. I feel like cardigans are just very easy to wear. Like you can just put it on over whatever you're wearing pretty much. So yeah, I and I'm looking forward to having this finished as well. Also this, I just can't get over the stitch pattern for this. It's actually really fun to work on and it it is mosaic knitting and sometimes it feels like it takes a while, but honestly, I feel like each row of flowers doesn't, it doesn't feel like it takes me too long to get through. So it kind of feels like you're working stripes. You know how stripes are always like, oh, okay, one more stripe and you're like oh just let me knit one more stripe like I kind of feel like that's the case for the flowers I'm like oh just let's just do like one flower row and I'm like oh well close to starting the next one so let's just do the next flower row so that is what that looks like and then my second progress update is or my third sorry this is my third project for this week, or my work in progress for this week. Where did I finish off? I made good progress on this. I spent a lot of time on this this week. Is my Asu or Asu sweater. So from the last time I talked about it, I was working on the right sleeve. And I will show you my stitch marker progress for the week. So I started here on the sleeve and I finished this entire sleeve and then I worked, after I did that, I worked on the neckband, 
which is worked in both of the colors and it is knit. I knit this flat. It is a folded collar. Actually, let me uh, let me talk about the details or some first first things first details before I go into like how I knit this because I did make some modifications to this and I want to talk about it. Uh, but I knit the neckband and then I started on the left sleeve. Okay, so again, this is the Asu sweater by Ozuko. And I knit this in two different, or two yarn colors. So the first one is Explore, both are Explore Knits Denali Sock Base. The variegated color is Bryce Canyon National Park. And the tonal color is Chinli. And this is a sweater that is worked sideways. So it is mostly knit flat. The sleeves are knit in the round though. So you basically have like the right side is one color and the left side is the other color. And let me first talk about the sleeves. So I, my gauge for this was very off from the pattern gauge. So I did have to, the only thing while I was knitting the body that I had to keep in mind was when I was following the instructions, I knit or I cast on the number of stitches it says. And if it says, to, you know, cast off or cast on stitches, I followed the instructions for size one, which is the size that I'm making. I had to size down to US 3 needles and then, yes, the only part of the pattern I really had to pay attention to was that if it said to, although this wasn't too hard to modify because it would usually say, you know, it, something like knit this amount of rows or until you reach this measurement. And so I always just knit until the measurement because I ended up having to knit a lot more rows to reach that measurement. And so that all worked out fine. However, for the sleeves, I was worried about the math because the sleeves don't say how much in like a inches or centimeters wise, how much to knit before you decrease. It said how many rows to knit or how many rounds to knit before you decrease. And that was the kind of like when it says to repeat this decrease pattern, it was how many rounds and then decrease, not like one inch and then decrease or something. So I had to do some math with my gauge that I got for this. And what ended up working for me was that there were, there's actually like two different decrease sections. Like one is a faster decrease and one's a slower decrease. I ended up just following one decrease uh, like pattern. So I just knit. So for me, what I did was knit three rows, decrease one row. And that was what I followed all the way from the underarm until the, until the cuff. So it is just a straight line for me for the decreases and it worked out lengthwise and also circumference wise for my arm. And so this might be different for anyone depending on their gauge, like just how the decreases are gonna work for this. But since this sleeve, this sleeve is worked in the round, it's just like working any other sleeve. So if you kind of already know how you like your sleeves to fit and how you knit them, then it probably should be okay and not that big of a deal. But I did just for my own sake of like, I did not want to have to rip out if it turned up badly. I just had to do some math to figure it out, but it all worked out for me and my gauge. And then the cuff is a folded cuff. And so you do size down your needles to knit the cuff, which is actually, you know, knit double the length and then you fold it on the inside. And then I just, just to make sure that it stays stretchy, 
I don't usually do like the bind off method where you knit and bind off the seam together. I just bind off and then I sew it down manually because I just sew it a lot looser around just to make sure that it has kind of that stretch. So it is a folded, folded wrist, folded hem. No, well, yeah, it's folded. Oops, here at the wrist. So that was the first sleeve and I had to write down exactly what I did, which honestly was not hard because it's just the same thing for the decreases, but I just wanna make sure I follow the same thing for my other sleeve. And then I want to talk about the neckband because I did start it and then I ripped out what I had for a little bit. I worked on it a little bit. I didn't finish it, but I was working on it and then I was like, I don't like it. And so I ripped it out and did it again. Here's the neckband. As you can tell, the front color is the Chinle color and then the back is the Bryce Canyon National Park. And you can, the instructions say that you can knit it in the round in, oh my gosh, in mosaic knitting in the round. And I was like, I'm not feeling like learning how to do this. I think I did like look at the video that was linked or I think a video was linked in the pattern. And I briefly looked at it and I was like, no, my brain just can't handle it right now. So I'm just going to knit it. And the instructions in the pattern says this too. Like you can just knit it flat and just do mosaic flat. That's fine, it doesn't have to be in the round. So that's what I ended up doing. And so this seam here was actually like open, it wasn't connected and I just knit the rest in, uh, oh my gosh, what did I just say? Mosaic, no, not mosaic knitting, in, oh my gosh. Anyway, I knit the collar flat and it's, all, it's a folded, collar as well. So you, you knit it and then you fold it in half and sew down the end on the inside, which is the same same thing as the cuff here, the sleeve cuff. But the pattern said to knit the neckband in one by one rib. And I so that's how I started off. And I did not like how it looked. And I noticed I don't think that the sample knit or the version of this sweater on the pattern. I don't think that the neckband is worked one by one rib. I was looking at it and I was like, I think it's worked in stockinette. It looks like it. It does not look like one by one rib. Or if it is, it is not how my one, one by one rib ever looks. So in order to just copy how the cuff looks on the sleeve, I just ended up doing the same. A stockinette folded neckband in two colors. So that is what I did. And then of course at the end, I just, before I sewed it down, folded and sewed it down, I knit, I mattress stitched the two colors together on one side. And yeah, I like this result a lot better than if I did it in one by one rib. We'll see because my one by one rib just kind of like sucks. Like I don't like how it looks. But I think this looks a lot nicer and it matches the sleeve cuff. So that sounded better to me. And then I, another reason why I undid what I, my first version of the, the collar is you might not be able to tell oh let me i just need to try and like hold this up and talk about it you can kind of maybe tell on this side there is so there is like neck shaping on the front so right at the shoulder it goes down to the middle of the front and the way part of me wishes that i didn't work the neck Band for this so that I could show you what the increases and decreases look like for the front neck here but it was very staircase looking so it was very like up and straight 
up and straight, up and straight. And when I picked up for the neckband and I knit a few rows, you could clearly see, you could still see like the staircase. And so after I ripped back and I picked up again the second time, I tried my best to not, like if there's like a staircase like corner, I don't know how to show it. If there's, oh my gosh. If there's a corner, corner, I, instead of picking up stitches here and then going across, I just picked up diagonally and I just eyeballed it. So you can actually see on the inside of my, the neck here, you can actually see those like corners that I just like, when I picked up stitches, I just went straight diagonally through them just so that I could get a smoother line on the front where it slopes. On this side, you can kind of see it right in this middle section, kind of. It looks less smooth, but I can deal with that. And then the other thing I had to do or wanted to do when I picked up stitches the second time for the neckband was the rate at which I picked up the stitches. I think that the pattern says every stitch you pick up. And I think it would have been too big or too loose. So I picked up, I think I wrote this down. It might've been every four of five that I picked up, something like that. So that was helpful. Oh, and then I also, there's so many there. It feels like there's a lot of modifications I made for this, but none of them were too drastic. But another thing that I did do was I only knit the neckband to three inches before I folded it. And the pattern I think says four inches. So I shortened it so that now after you fold it in half, mine's is one and a half inches. And I think that that was such a great call because I think that if I did the four inches, which means after I fold it, it would be two inches tall, it would be too tall. And I think that it would end up kind of like standing up more on my neck. So I'm really glad that I just like kept it at the one and a half because this looks fine too. It doesn't look short at all to me. So yeah, so that looks good to me. And I think that I could finish this by next week. That is the hope to finish this by next week. But we will see how it all goes. Depends on how this week goes. But we've really only got one more sleeve left. And I can definitely finish a sleeve in a week, as you can tell, because I finished a sleeve in a week. And I'm about at the same point where I was last week on the sleeve. So as long as things go well, I could probably finish this next week. But I think it's looking really cute and I really like the colors. And so I'm excited to see like after this is done, blocking and wearing it, how it feels and looks. So that is the Asu sweater. Oh, I don't think I mentioned, I am knitting, oh no, I did, US three needles. I had to size down. I remember I said that. Okay, and then the last thing that I worked on this week is the Turtle Dove Shawl by Sari Nordland. And this is the mystery knit along that she is doing this year. And so for this week, so this started two weeks ago. And so this week on Wednesday, clue number two came out and I finished clue two already. So if you are still working on yours or you haven't looked at clue two yet, uh, this is your warning that I'm going to show what I have so far, my turtle dove shawl. All right, here it is. And so you can see my stitch marker here from the tip to here was clue one. And then from here to where I'm at right now is clue two. And so a lot more has got uh, worked on. And 
I think it's a really pretty stitch pattern and I actually don't mind working these cable uh, bobbles. I actually think the way that these bobbles are worked are it's like actually fine and I don't mind it. So I, I think the bobbles are cute. I really like the cables and I really, really like the section or the panel that has the bobbles. Like I really like this kind of like zigzag twisted stitch pattern that's going on. Uh, one thing I noticed, and I just want to also bring it up, is like, oh, you can like, because the light is behind, it's like showing in the back. Okay, let me hold it up here. The, I think that these two panels here with the bobbles are the same, but the, the zigzag is going opposite from each other. And then I thought that these two panels were also the same, but they're just slightly different. So this one's just a bit smaller of the cable. Oops, sorry. I'm just trying to show it in better lighting. And then this one is a slightly bigger cable, and there's actually like a pearl, pearl row in between this one. And this one does not have... That. So I just wanted to like point that out just in case if you were curious. So it's going well so far. The yarn I'm using for this is Woolberry Fiberco Berry Sport Base in the colorway Creamsicle, which is a very lightly variegated color. And then the Surrey is also Woolberry in the Coral colorway, which is a really light peach pink color, and so I think it works really well together. I really like how it's coming out. The pattern does call for a fingering and some kind of fluffy lace weight, but I had this one skein of sport and I figured it was close enough, and so my final measurements for this are probably going to be slightly bigger, but I think I will be okay yardage-wise, I hope. But it's turning out really cute. It is one size. I'm using US 4 needles for this. And it's actually really fun to work on. Uh, yeah, I'm just really enjoying it. And a lot of my friends are also knitting this, and so it feels really fun to just kind of be knitting on something together again. And Actually, I feel like we're always knitting stuff together, which is awesome. But yeah, just having another project to work on together is just really fun. So that is my turtle dove shawl. It's going to be, it's called a shawl, but it's actually very small. Like I feel like if there's a total of four clues and this is the end of clue two, I kind of feel like we'll probably start decreasing. I think that it's a tri triangular shawl like it's just like a, a small thing actually I don't know but I'm assuming that it's the one where it, you increase and then you decrease and it'll just be a triangle I think but do not know but anyway I really like working on this and the stitch pattern is really cute so I'm also thinking about knitting this again once I'm done with this one and some other knits but yeah it's really cute and really fun and probably really good for like gift giving as well and it's so soft so yeah so that is the turtle dove shawl and that is all of the knitted works in progress that I've been working on this week and then really quickly I do have a short spinning update I finally finished half of my fiber from the the Yarn Addict Co. The Autumn in the City colorway in the BFL BFL silk fiber. So I finished spinning half of it, and so this is half of it on this bobbin. And I've started the other half. I am doing a two ply fractal. So yeah, we're we're now over halfway done with the spin. And I really like how it's turning out and it just feels very holiday Christmassy vibes because of the colors because it's mostly red and green. So I'm very happy that I'm spinning it now. 
this might be my final spin of the year. So it's feeling good. I feel good about my choice in having this be my last spin of the year. So yeah, we're getting close. And yeah, it's just been fun to work on. I will say after, so this is the first time that I've spun with a BFL and silk fiber. Or well, this, yes, this is my first time spinning that in like BFL silk, but it's also my first time uh, spinning with a silk, like silk being part of the fiber. And after spinning half of this, I will say, I think that it's a little hard to work with slightly because there are some sections that as I'm drafting, if it's just the silk, it just tends to like fly away. And I don't know if that's a me, it could very well be a me problem, but it is something I'm noticing while spinning this fiber. I thought that maybe it was something in the beginning of working with this fiber that I would just have to kind of like figure it out and then it'll feel natural, but I'm still kind of feel like I'm fighting with certain parts where it's just kind of like very slippy. And I think that that's the silk. But the shininess of this is just so cool and I'm excited for the final, final end product for this. I don't know what I'm going to knit with it yet, but yeah, spinning it has been fun. I have to focus a little bit more on this just because I think the silk is kind of like causing me to like just have to slow down a bit. But yeah, it's been really fun. I love the colors. So that's a big... It's a big part of it is the color of the fibers, I think. Actually, also the fiber. Actually, the whole thing, but you know. Okay, so that's my quick spinning update. And then I do have just one acquisition to share with you. And that is, I just got this in the mail today, so I thought that was perfect timing so I could talk about it. I got my Nest Fiber Club fiber in the mail. And so this is the November color. And it is on a super fine merino and the colorway is called Glad Tidings. So I will show you the color. Here it is. I love it. I loved every color that I've gotten from the Nest Fiber Club so far. Let me try and cover the purple light again. So here it is. I kept it in the bag, so there's probably some glare, but it is, looks like there's some red, some orangey brown, a purple, a blue, and some green. And I don't know when I'm gonna spin this, but I, I love it. I love these colors. So, and it's super fine merino, which is the same base that I used for my pressed flowers shawl spin. That was another nest fiber super fine merino. And so I'm pretty excited to spin this up because I really like how the super fine merino feels when you spin it and also when you don't. I seriously, every time I get one of these bags of fiber, I just like, I just stick my hand in it and just kind of like squish the fiber do that okay so yeah that is it for the acquisitions oh okay I'm glad I remembered this because last week I wanted to talk about it but I forgot and so I want to talk about it this week two weeks ago in my video I showed you all the first like two colors of the Explorer Knits winter solstice box and I very much apologize because I got the timing wrong on when the first box was supposed to be opened for this. And I think what happened was I got the full box. So the four skeins of variegated four skeins of tonal and the day box. And I think when I counted backwards for the week to figure out when you start opening it, I counted the, I must have counted the day box and then like the four weeks of the, so it would be like 
one the first week you open one tonal one variegated and the next week you open another tonal and a variegated so there'd be four and then I think I counted the day box for five weeks and so that I counted five weeks back from the winter solstice but it's supposed to be four and so I opened it a week early which means I showed you all the first week a week early and so I very much apologize if you had any spoilers for that uh, so I could show you week two I think this is week two but I'm a little nervous about showing them again. So I'll probably just wait until the whole countdown is done. And I will just show you all at the end after, after everything's done so that there will hopefully be no spoilers unless, unless you decide to open the box a lot later. So anyway, I believe that this week was officially week two and I opened week two. I'm actually keeping with my personal opening schedule for the boxes. So I've also opened week three because I am going to keep at the five week that I had so that I would have the four weeks of opening the variegated and tonal and then on the day I will open the day box. And because of that and I'm scared about messing up again, I will just show you all after <laughs> after it's all done so I yeah I wanted to mention it in last week's video but I forgot so I'm mentioning it now uh, but okay so that is all I have for the main content of the video but I thought that I would since I think that this is a slightly shorter video or maybe it's not I just looked at the time not really but it's been a while since I've had like a chatting section at the end where I talk about stuff that's going on other than yarn even though I know that that's what we're probably all here to talk about but I did I did mention at the beginning of this video so today I had a great day because I went to the Seattle Aquarium this morning for the first time I know that's probably a surprise I have been living in Seattle for maybe about is it four years or is it five years? And I've never been to the Seattle Aquarium. So uh, me and my boyfriend finally went today to check it out. Part of the motivation or actually kind of the big motivation for going was because they have a Animal Crossing kind of like event happening there. And I think it might have started like a few months ago, but it goes until the end of the year, I think. And I love Animal Crossing, so I really wanted to go check it out while they still had kind of like the event going on. And it's nothing crazy. It's nothing big as far as like what the Animal Crossing part of the uh, aquarium experience is. But they did have some like cute kind of like background things you could take pictures with. They had some little like standy things around some of the attractions of the Animal Crossing characters that I just like took pictures of because it was cute and they have so if you play Animal Crossing there's in the museum in the game there's an owl named Blathers that tells you all of the information about everything you can put in the museum and so for certain animals and sections in the aquarium it had a little like Blathers little like plaque or like on the tv where they just like had little information about the animals and I thought that that was just really cute. There was a place where you could like scan a QR code and you could get kind of like a bingo card of like what animals do you see in the aquarium and so it was just kind of fun like to you get nothing there's no like prize but I thought it was just kind of fun to like check it off as we walked around the aquarium and it was just really cute and again I've never been to to the Seattle Aquarium so I thought it was just like good for me to go and see what was there. I think the sea otters were probably the cutest things there. Uh, they're just so cute and yeah it was a good day and since we were out 
and it was also rainy and cold today. That was my, it was my opportunity to wear my cowl, my newly finished cowl and fingerless mitts. And so that was also really fun to wear. I was trying to like, I wanted to take pictures while we were out, like finished object pictures of them, but it was very rainy. And so it wasn't kind of like ideal to do that anywhere. And in the aquarium, like the lighting was not great, you know, for pictures. So that was like, you know, that was fine. And anyway, I just thought it was, you know, it was a fun, fun time and just good. I don't really, I don't really go out and do like the Seattle touristy or local stuff. And so it was just kind of good to get out and look at something different. And yeah, I had a good time. I, uh, we also had lunch out, which we also don't really do. And so that was good very tasty and I also got some milk tea because it's been a while since I had milk tea. I usually get Earl Grey milk tea, that is my favorite. So anyway, it was just a good day and then I came back and started talking to you all. So with that, I hope you're all also having a great day or a great weekend or week and yeah, I'm trying to think. Yeah, as always, let me know in the comments down below what you have been working on while listening or watching to this podcast because I love reading your comments. And also, since we were just talking about milk tea or boba, let me know if you also like milk tea or boba. What is your go-to order? I would love to know. And yeah, with that, I will talk to you in the next video. Bye!